What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about the Star Wars Battlefront collection yet again, and but talk about the success that it's seemingly already having. Um, we talked about this when it came out. I want to go more in depth to it and kind of do a little bit of predicting because it's kind of coming true. And what I'm talking about is, well, how well can this game actually do, right? It does really well, you know, in terms of views and, you know, the metrics online. Now, online is not everything. Just, and I will be honest, just like this chart uh, that we're going to look at or these graphs are not also everything, but... I think there's a desire for the, I mean, these games are old. They're uh, the first one is actually just celebrating 20 years. Like they are very old games, but you think about the popularity of EA's battlefront two, even right, you know, as they were pulling the plug on it. And I mean, it's still somewhat, you know, doing okay right now, even without support, right? There's a market for, even though it's an old game, there's a market for people to play it. So I want to look at this, and this actually comes from Push Square, great website. And they basically show the pre-order listings for both Europe as well as the U.S. And you can see, I mean, just, again, just almost an eye test, right? You don't know the numbers, and we'll talk about that in a second, but you see pre-orders. And, you know, Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, number two, right after Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which obviously comes out just in like two days, it's actually sandwiched in between them you have elden ring you have another final fantasy okay it's all dominated basically by final fantasy elden ring and then star wars and then you look i believe the u.s one is this one uh final fantasy final fantasy elden ring final fantasy star wars and then final fantasy again and now i think they say in here yeah in the second paragraph up until this morning the star wars battlefront bundle was actually tracking higher than rebirth and elden ring in the uk under the default best selling filter in the u.s it is the third most popular pre-order behind them so a little difference between you know pre-order and best selling and and again like i, I want to make it known i'm not here to clickbait or to you know, you know kind of lead people astray like being up on the charts is absolutely not everything and also like you don't know the official numbers uh honestly to you and this is not like a punching bag thing but to use even suicide squad as an example suicide squad i think was number two maybe it was even number one for like an extended period of time on these charts now as soon as the game came out it completely you know plummeted it's out of there and we don't know that's another thing we don't really know how well suicide squad did actually in all we also don't know how well it did specifically on playstation we can monitor where it is in like the listings you know does it go from 2 to 12 to 32 right actually I don't even think you could look that far down but that's kind of my point you don't know it for sure so I'm not here to like you know lead people astray I think this game is going to be quite successful to be honest with you and I think I think this is just kind of one little look again it's not everything but I think and I imagine as the next couple weeks go this one is going to continue it's going to be on this list it's going to probably be in the top five and you know you'll have rise of the Ronin come in. You'll have South Park. Actually, I do think South Park would enter it. You have Dragon's Dogma. Besides those three, there's other games in March, but besides those three, I could see Star Wars lasting and being a part of those other three, so like a top four kind of situation. No, maybe Elden Ring stays kind of indefinitely, right? Maybe some other game kind of springs up. Maybe Stellar Blade, specifically as we start to get closer to April, right? So in March, maybe Stellar Blade starts to make the top five and like won't leave it, right? All good things. These aren't like necessarily bad things, but I do think Star Wars stands a chance to stay here, and that goes again to what we said in the beginning and kind of this prediction thing how well can this game do i think it can do extremely well and when i say extremely well okay i gotta give like some sort of you can't just say those words you gotta kind of give figures i think like a multi-million kind of seller and, and that might be too much now multi-million in my opinion i don't know if this is like a factual thing i think it is too Okay, at least two million, I think, to be multi-million. So um, I think it can do it. You know, it's a, again, it, it's a genre and it's an IP. And well, here's the thing: these games are legendary. Like these games, you either grew up on or you've heard about. And you know, if you're into this stuff and you think about EAs, like there's a there's a window, there's an opening, kind of for this thing to come in. And even though it's 20 years, 18 years old, and they're bringing in everything, like it's the full package deal, right? I really think it can do well, and I think people are almost going to be, this is a prediction of mine, I think people will probably be shocked with how well it does, because I could see a lot of the people that were there, maybe even the entirety of Battlefront 2, to be honest with you, but at least, like, say, the tail end. Anybody was that was at the last, say, two years, as, as it was really rebuilding itself and building itself much stronger, right, Battle, uh, EA's Battlefront 2, 
I think all of those people, or at least, you know, the large majority, I think they might jump over and at least try it, you know, for a few weeks. I, I know I'm going to. I've seen a lot of people online very excited about it. So truly, I would not be surprised if this is a multi-million or, you know, if they say, hey, this thing sold like one, one and a half million, even like, say, the first month or two. I really could see it. And I'm and just to throw it in. And I think I've said this before, but I'm really happy they're doing it. Like I didn't think anything of it. I knew it was the 20th anniversary of Battlefront because I, I wrote it down to do it for my third channel. Like I knew I was going to talk about Battlefront 1. I knew it was the anniversary. I didn't think they'd really do anything uh, you know, about it. So to have a collection, have them come together, I think is going to be really cool. And I think it's going to be really successful. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure as always you're subscribed to the channel, bell icon turned on. I hope to see you all on the next one.